and welcome to the Oh God Why podcast, episode 16. Today you have me, your host, Umar Awesome, and my co-host, Randy Marge. Unfortunately, our other co-host, Peter uh, Lou, will not be here with us today. He's dead. I killed him. Uh, no, uh, he just uh, had to do other shit. You know what I mean? I ripped his soul right out of his body. Slipped it up. Oh, um, Randy, listen, you know you have a soul fetish, but I mean, come on. <laughs> soul fetish? Yeah, no, baby, yeah. I just love you for what's on the inside. Plunges hand into stomach, rips out the heart. To be funny, it's not like something like a Joe, like um, those um, a uh, Jojo stand would be. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> like I don't know. It seems, it seems like like something like I don't know how to describe it. Like something you like you could just say anything is a Jojo stand, and no one can argue with you. Tr- fair enough, but like it's like sort of like how would you describe this? Like it's not say magical, but in the sense of like uh, how would you say? Mm-hmm. I don't know how to describe it's it. Different. You know, but it's like seems something unusual, exotic. You know Would I mean? you say that it's perhaps, I don't know, bizarre? Yes. Uh, yes, okay. it is. <laughs> you know, but anyway, but besides the JoJo puns, how was your week, Randy? Pretty good. I have been uh, very sort of busy, somewhat busy. I've mm-hmm. been playing Fantasy Star Online 2. Nice. Which is an MMO that is... Uh, ninety-five percent waifus and five percent Gundams. Nice. Uh, yeah, basically, it, <laughs> it's like every every option is like either pretty anime boy or pretty anime girl, or also you can be a giant robot man. And I'm why like, not no, all three? I mean, you gotta be a Gundam. But why can't you be a boy girl Gundam? You can be a sexy girl Gundam. No, I would both. I'm saying both a boy and a girl. What do you what do you mean? You know you're that's what I mean. I I said what do you mean and your response was that's what I mean. <laughs> do you not hear me or something? No, I guess I don't. Maybe I'm in the void. Okay, maybe. Oh uh, okay, what I was trying to say is that like why can't I have all three of them, you know what I mean? You can. There's there's oh, really? well there's no sexy boy gun. There's kind of sexy boy gun. So it's not really sexy boy gun. Okay. Okay. There's no, either okay. you can be you can be a boy Gundam. Or you can mm-hmm. be like a sexy girl Gundam. Uh, okay, I see. I see what you're saying. Okay. Okay. So yeah, no. this is a, since I there was... is no truth in flesh but death, I decided yes, to be a no. Gundam. No, that is true. What was that um anime that was like it was it's made by Trigger Studios. What was it called? It was that like really shitty one? You gotta be specific. It was like the one with like the it was like zero something. Not 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 it was like a mecha anime. No clue what you're talking about. Let me stretch it up. It's like there's this like like girl with like like demon ear like I don't know like band like demon ear bands or something what you would call. I have zero clue what we're talking about right now. Fuck. Um, Negative I, clue. What was the like thing that everyone was like really that mech anime that everyone was really interested in for like maybe a few episodes and it turned to I, shit last year? Oh, Darling and the Franks. Like you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, Darling in the Franks. Yes, yes. Yeah, I don't think that was made by Trigger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's some... Who the fuck was made it? it then? I don't know. I don't think it was Trigger. Who the fuck made Darling in the Franks? Because it seemed like uh, Trigger's art style. I don't... Let's see. I'm it looking at it right by... now. It was made No, my God. Yeah, no, it was made by Trigger. Yeah. It, but it's not on Trigger's page, though. <laughs> That's an ironic thing. I'm not surprised. People were not a big fan of the back half of that show. You know, like, what the fuck was that, though? You know what I mean? I don't know. The only thing I ever remember that uh, the Trigger made was Kill a Kill. Oh, uh, fair enough. And also, you you can't forget the classic Inferno Cop. Oh, my God, Inferno Cop! Yes, I forgot about Inferno Cop. You know, it's, it's, I'm pretty sure it's made by when the people at Trigger, you know. <laughs> fucking it is. I fucking love Inferno Cop. Oh, they're yeah. also making the oh, what's it? Cyberpunk's getting an anime. Yeah, I heard about it. Yeah, there's triggers making that as well. Yeah. Oh, actually, uh, back to Inferno Cop. There's actually making a second season that uh, has been completed by the passing Inferno. Co- okay. Oh, are they, are okay, they making so an Inferno they're... Cop sequel? Yeah, but the issue is that the voice actor, uh, I guess the Japanese one. Junchi Goto, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, has actually uh, passed in February 2020. Oh, that's sad. Yeah, but man, I uh, I'd be quite interested to make a you know one like because it was popular for its time, you know. 
Yep. I'm immune to your bullets. So am I. No! <laughs> and he explodes. Oh, God, I remember that. It's so good. God, if you're, watching, if you're listening to this and you haven't seen Inferno Cup, go watch Inferno Cup. It's so good. Isn't it on YouTube or something? I don't know. It's on Verve. You can pirate it. Don't yeah. tell anyone I told you to do that. Keep that on the DL. And then isn't this hypocrisy of what you said like what, a few uh, a few episodes ago? I my stance on piracy is very flip floppy. <laughs> oh, we can watch it on Crunchyroll, so I mean, there's that. Yeah. Well, I figured because it's on Verve. Okay, I knew like okay, is Verve still even a thing now? Because half of the company's left there. or something like that. The only company that left was Funimation. I oh, really, I thought Rooster Teeth left as well or something. Oh, maybe I don't know. I I don't use Verve to watch Rooster Teeth content. Honestly, Fair I just don't watch a lot of Rooster Teeth content these days. Can't blame you. It's not that great. <laughs> yep. I watched Camp Camp when that came out. I watched most of Ruby. I watched like 98% mm. of Red vs. Blue. Yeah. I saw a lot of their content like when it was coming out. Mm-hmm. And then recently, just the company has just been having a lot of issues. That's gone to kind of shit, man. Like, yeah, literally. they dumped a handful of the founders. And it's like, but these are the people that I liked. <laughs> Why the thing is, my understanding with some of the founders being dumped, it's um, one of them was leaving willingly. It's like, yeah, I'm doing my own thing now. And the other one was like most threatening the co- their co workers, you know, like people under them, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like physical harm, if that makes sense. I'm sure there's a lot of jazz and a lot of extra explanations, but whatever, whatever the reasons may mm-hmm. be, I watched Rooster Teeth for a very specific cast of people, and those yeah. people are beginning to leave, and I am losing interest. <laughs> No, fair enough. That's understandable, and rightly as, so. As I've heard people put it, like they're gonna have to recast some of the most beloved characters in these shows, and it's like I don't want that. I mean, like, isn't one of them uh, leaving? Who's the voice actor for uh, Caboose from Red vs. Blue? Pretty, pretty sure. You know, the yeah, that one. Yeah, he's the one who was like threatening to kill like his other like other like co-founders as well, mind you. I don't know. Like, you I know remember- nothing about the situation. I forgot what like what was the British guy's name? I'm forgetting. Um, Gavin. You know, did like, huh? Gavin. Gavin. Yeah, yeah. And then like, Lily. Um, he was starting to, to say that Gavin's him and his wife should actually be been killed by you know like for them having all different opinions and like you know gun control or something like that. You know what I mean? I don't know. And then this is really right on the cusp of um his uh Gavin and his wife being nearly killed by some like weird stalker fan thing you heard about that news it was a few months a week as if it was almost a year ago now at this point right just pretty crazy yeah i know and uh more or less like they've been on bad terms for a long time now and the company i think just decided to boot him yeah. off i think yep. yeah shit's uh, really fucked whatever whatever the reason may be like i just can't <laughs> i don't want to watch these shows without these people in it no no stuff understandable you know Yep. Yeah. No. Uh, but yeah. Rooster Teeth is in a rapid downward spiral. I mean, it's kind of been for a while now. I kind. I'm gonna say like after um uh what's I forget. I'm thinking uh Mounty. I'm not saying it was after Mounty Autumn died, but it's like more or less like Ruby around like after that. what Ruby season. Yeah. No. Fair enough. But I mean. Season three kind of picked it back up to some extent, then it just kind of went back down again. You know what I mean? Well, seasons one and two were pretty good. Mm-hmm. Season three was pretty all right. Yeah. And then that's kind of when they ran out of, I believe that's when they ran out of Monty's material. So they just kind of had to go from there. Yeah. And it's that's kind of when it was. <sighs> yeah, because like season three was very picking up steam. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then it just kind of like, what the fuck happened for the we're on season seven now right i don't even i don't keep up with it anymore no fair enough there's like it was season seven was just finished like about a few months ago and season eight is on the cusp of being released now i got into the the art there's an arc mm. or a couple episodes when when they get like snowed into some house yeah, yeah that was actually kind of cool watching the character interactions in that house physically harmed me i was so emotionally done with trying to put up with these characters just listening to them try to communicate to one another mm-hmm. and it i was like i'm done with this show i mean i check you were done then i was done a lot more earlier you know what i mean fair i stuck with it for quite a long time i same here absolutely love the lore of Ruby. like i think that premise is super cool and i yeah love no it really is but like for me i just kind of got done after what was like season 
three it was like season four is when everyone's just starting going like you know the scram season adventure four, like put up with. season yeah. five hurt me. yeah four i just was done with it i watched five i watched six as well i think you know i, I did watch i didn't watch that. seven because at that point i was just fucking done it's like it just wasted like three seasons of filler more or less you know what i mean yeah i all that stuff could be easily gone down to one and a half seasons you know maybe two seasons the the rage i spoilers for ruby if anyone listening to this gives a shit mm-hmm. um okay in i don't remember the season numbers but they spend like a whole so okay there's blake i haven't seen the show in a little while but i remember it pretty well yeah. made me so fucking angry there's blake and she's the cat girl yes she has like one and a half seasons worth of character development and relationship building with the mm-hmm. monkey dude sun wukong Oh, we're talking about how more they just kind of switched the whole like love yeah, no. relationship. So, yeah, Blake and Sun yeah. Wukong have a whole season together building a relationship. And then in the next season, they're just like, but Counterpoint Yang, like, I don't have any problem with the Blake Yang relationship. But mm-hmm. if you're going to spend a whole ass season developing one and then mm-hmm. spend like a couple of ev- episodes developing the other and you go with the other one, what are you doing? Yeah, my main issue is that, like, like you said, it's like not only the, the them going to a different ship necessarily or anything, like a different relationship. That's fine, you know. Just build like, it better. Yeah, no, my issue is that they literally did immediately after. You know what I mean? They just fucking cocked my dude Sun Wukong at a left field. I mean, didn't, wasn't wasn't there some sort of relationship being built with Vice around season two or something, and then that just never produced anything? Between Vice and who? It was like the blue-haired guy. Neptune? Yeah. yeah, no, they made net well, they made Neptune interested in her and they like they had kind of a thing. But then they were like, who Neptune who? What? That's not even a character, dude. Yeah, like it's season three, he was like kind of sort of like as a side character, and it was like after that we never saw him again. So he's more interested in interesting in Ruby Chibi than he is in Ruby. Fair. Yeah, no, that's what I'm really confused at. Why is he more prominent in Ruby, Ruby yeah, Chibi, though? Why do they do a better job with the characters in Ruby Chibi than they do in Ruby? Because <laughs> I assume it's different writers, you see. Like, I mean, Ruby Chibi isn't that good either, mind you. I didn't like, I didn't even stand the first few episodes. I was like, fuck this shit, I'm I done. I really liked Ruby Chibi. I watched, like, a lot of that. Fair enough, you know, it's like, it's just not my type of cup of tea, but it's far more yeah. superior than fucking a regular Ruby. They just do, like, th- th- watching character action interactions there is, like, kind of sweet and charming. And it's like, oh, okay, I get it. But yeah, watching yeah. character but, like, interactions from... in the regular show is, like, why? <laughs> yeah, and, uh, like, the thing is, my main issue with, like, uh, Ruby Chibi is because, like, when it just went on hiatus for one year after Monty Autumn's death, you know, like, not to insult, like, not nothing to insult him or anything, or like, the people working there. I literally had to survive off of, like, Ruby, like, I guess fan art you know and such you know what i mean yeah so like those like kind of fan comics and also that's where i kind of got my thing for like the ruby chibi thing before ruby chibi became a thing you know what i mean yeah so then it's like this literally just feels like fan concepts of like hilarious hijinks of what the ruby team would do you know what i mean understanding yeah, yeah i feel you no but like i absolutely love fan comics i think they're so great you know but actually what i have you heard about um the recent review about h bombers guys reviewing uh ruby What's up? You haven't heard of H Bomber guy? I uh, no. Okay, he's a uh, quite a. No, I won't say necessarily full and famous uh, YouTuber or anything, but he's like quite well known. Um, I liked his I like his videos, and he did recently a video about Ruby. That's like really well done. You know, okay. you can explain what the fuck happened with Ruby more or less. That's fair. Like I'll send you the link actually right now. I, the answer to that is a lot. <laughs> I mean, it's two hours of him not like it's not him taking like a shit out on, but it was like more akin to like him trying to figure out what the fuck happened to it. Yeah, a lot, a lot happened with that show, and it makes me sad. The yeah, best way to describe it is just disappointment more than anything else, because it's not bad by. Uh, it's uh, super interesting, as I said yeah. before. I am enamored with a lot of these characters, and like yeah. the first three seasons, I absolutely adore. Season four, I'm still pretty into, but yeah. just like. It just emotionally wears you down. Like there's Oh no, it does. It's just the tolerance of how much can you put up with. I call it the most tolerance. How much of a filler are you willing to deal with? You know what I mean? Yeah. I just like people have conversations and I'm like, don't say this thing, and then they say mm. that thing, and I'm like, why would you do that? Yeah, okay, no, my main beef is like a season one to two is kinda like a filler, not necessarily a filler, but it's like 
like it, it was filler more or less but you're getting inklings you're getting more and more it was, was being developed on the background TNG. right what's up like with season one and two the development it was filler i would personally call it but there was still development being happening in the background yeah. then you saw the payoff in season three it was a lot of character development and like set pe like exactly it was it was good yeah I it was not necessarily a plot development, but it was the everything else was being developed which is fine then three would push the plot which is okay good then four decided fuck that and we're not doing that for like three more seasons we're gonna, we're gonna do, try some other stuff you know which isn't really bad or anything it's just why <laughs> <laughs> but it's just why you know like the oh. thing is like yeah, i don't know how... what what's up what were we saying yeah, I, like, I don't know how to describe it because, like, researchers, they, they have, like, actual good, you know, writers, you know. At the time when it was, like, being developed, they had, literally the Red versus Blue writing team, but they never used it. Yep. You know? The, the irony that is the show. I just wonder why. And, like, the thing is, like, it's not as if it hmm? is higher than Red versus Blue. You yeah, know? no. Well, when it started, it, it, it the production was cheap. But it was yeah. good, and I liked it. It was very, it was very simple, mm -hmm. and it like, but it was good. And whenever fighting happened, it was really pretty. Yeah, uh, it just had, like whenever mm -hmm. they weren't fighting, it was a little more like, oh, that's that's a look, that's aesthetics, I guess. No, no, but uh, you want to really piss me off more? What it was with Genlock? I wasn't. Hold on. Okay, so what's your beef with Genlock? Because I've only here's my deal. I've mm -hmm. seen like whatever the first season of Genlock was. Yeah, I was pretty into it, but I never. Yeah, no, same here. I never looked up anything about it. Never read any news about it. Like nothing. So what is the deal mm -hmm. with Genlock? What's going okay, on? Okay, my beef is not with the production itself. You know, nothing okay. with the research teeth or like with the actual like people making the show. Yes. You know, or I say the show itself. My concern is this is going to become Ruby 2.0. Because let mean? me explain what happened in the background, more or less. So, you know, recently has like a 2D department TV show, like kind of thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. But the issue is for the making of Genlock, they literally had to close down that studio more or less, their section that's, you know, focused all on Genlock. You know? Okay. Which isn't really bad, right? You know? I was going to say, can I posit the second idea that maybe, maybe Genlock should be Ruby 2.0 and we should move on from Ruby to Genlock? Well, no, let me explain. I mean, in the sense of not Ruby 2.0 as if it's like, it's potential, but like it's downfall. You know, it's the same thing going to happen all over fucking again. What do you mean? Like, what's what's the issue? Okay, so what I've noticed is like if you see the intro, you know, you see the fucking robots. They're they're cool, right? Really stylized. Yeah. yeah. You know, and then you look at the show for nearly the whole show, and you see totally different robots, like you know, beta rob stage robot robots, which is perfectly fine. You know. Okay. And then you see the actual cool fucking robots. Like, at the last episode or so, you know what I mean? Yeah. And there's, like, this cool-ass fight, right? Yes. If I remember correctly, you know, it's been a few months. Same. You know? And then the issue here, but then what the issue here was after that, it's like, okay, that's cool. There's potential. I like this. You know, I'll continue following it. What happened was, Rissati said, yeah, we're kind of out of money for that now. <laughs> there is no the comics problem. work well with DC. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, and here's a here's a kicker. You know, you know, uh, research here is like what research here like uh, premium premium or something. You know, we get like all the exclusive content first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They made a deal with fucking HBO to put the second season of John Locke there first. You know, which is not really wrong or anything. Kind of the purpose of the research here thing now. Yes. You know but that's my like, main problem. If it's the only way to get the budget to make it, like... you know that's that's perfectly fine. You know that's like understandable. You know it's like yeah, shit, shit. You know, got fucking bad yeah, and I'd rather it exist and then watch it later than it just not exist yeah i know exactly you know but here's the second issue uh i guess this is my second point if, I, if i'm counting correctly yeah they fired the guy who was producing the show oh that's not good you know that's bad and no one explained why that's <laughs> that's not good. Like, there's been no rumors or anything nothing like that which is understandable if the person is if, if each party doesn't want to bring anything up like that you know but the guy there's who curated a, it, you know, produced and created, like, it was his baby, more or less, you know. There's a hot trend with Ruby Productions, which is yeah, that Yeah, I know. I mean, at least with that, I, literally, the guy, uh, Mount Otum, literally died in that case. But Yeah, I'm a little skeptic as to the quality of Genlock Season 2 now. Yeah, like, I'm not saying, like, as if it won't be good, because there's definitely a premise, and they definitely learned stuff from Ruby, you know. 
But, yeah, but I've heard that season seven has like started pushing the plot more now and Ruby. Oh, well, that's nice. So let's hope the same thing happens because you know in a, a Gen Lock, and that's it becomes like Ruby, but like it has actually fulfills the potential potential of what Ruby could have been. As God long it. as long as the character act interactions don't make me want to rip off my ears, I think I'll mm -hmm. be good. I mean, at least with the character actions in Gen Lock, they didn't rip out your ears initially. Yeah, you know because. They were pretty good. Yeah, you know. So my main concern is that it's going to become Ruby 2.0, you know, and how, what Ruby is now. Mm hmm You know, that's my main beef, you know, with Genlock. Because let's see, if Season 2 comes out, because it was supposed to come out sometime this year, and Chrono mm -hmm. has fucked that up. Yeah. Like, because they've been making the comics, which I heard of were actually not that bad. But I'm, again, I'm not really a comic guy, you know what I mean? Yeah. I I so what, um, to read a few more, but they're not my main source of entertainment. Yeah, but you know what? The actual kicker is like Ruby has its own manga series. Oh, that's pretty cool. And the thing is, apparently, it's heard that Ruby's earlier seasons are done better in the manga than they were done in the show. That's pretty impressive, considering the early seasons are pretty good. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking about like plot wise, mainly. You know what I mean? I like the plot of the first few seasons. I, then again, I'm also a big fan of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, where the first plot is like, let's just sort of vibe for like a season. Yeah. But actually, uh, have you guys... Um, um, I'm sorry. Uh, I forget Peter yeah, I, was here, not here. I, but whatever. you remember um, about Transformers, right? The big... Yes, I'm familiar with the concept of yes, Transformers. I, I, I just like to nickname it the America Mecha Morse without the person inside. That's fair. You know. But actually, so Transformers vs. Cybertron... Is actually being produced by Rooster Teeth as well, which actually is really good, apparently. Wow, that has the potential to be good. No, no, it's not. It doesn't have as if it's not the potential. There's actually, it's actually quite good because it's more. Uh, it's, are, people, like, are people watching it and it's good? Yeah, people are actually praising yeah. it. You That's know. always good to hear. Transformers has gotten a bad shake due to a very particular movie director not giving them the best mm. reputation. Yeah. Uh, so I'm very excited to see some new, interesting Transformers content. Mm. I mean, I should, I should, you should watch. It's called Transformers vs. Cybertron. I heard it's a lot more nice. I'm actually planning to watch it over the weekend as well. You know, binge it. Fair. I don't see but you know, that. actually, that I've actually watched a review called, uh, from Jobby the Hong. I think we talked about him before, right? I don't think so. I, I mean, I, also, I mentioned him to well, you before. Maybe. Because he's like a big, like, you know, uh, uh, Star Wars, and not Star Wars, I mean, Transformer, Transformers and, uh, like, um, not necessarily anime, but like kind of mecha kind of guy, you know what I mean? Big robots I'll and shit. I'll on the Transformers Reddit. You know. And he's like, you know, he's, he, and he said it was a good show, you know, I mean, there's some stuff that's like, eh, you know, but, you know, he's trying to do it as open and possible. I said, you know, it's definitely interesting and definitely good, you know. So mm. that's what I'm, that's exciting. Someone will probably watch that starting tomorrow or so. I feel ya. No, do, okay. I haven't. While we're on the topic of cartoons, first of all, any more Transformer news we want to get out? Actually, this I just heard. I just saw the video yesterday. And I was like, "Holy shit!" You know, I should probably okay. watch this soon. Because the thing is, for the past two or three weeks, I've been just studying math the whole time. You know, Randy. Yeah. I have uh, been doing jack shit. I've been just studying six hours of sleep, six hours of math, more or less. Uh, cool leg. You know, not good for my mental health, Randy. Okay, I promise you that much. No, it would not be. It actually be pretty bad. Yeah. Uh, but wait, so wait, what video are we talking about? You said you saw a video? Uh, it was, a, it was a, re a review of it, more or less. Oh, you're talking about the review video. Okay, I thought you were talking about some other video. Yeah, no, no, sorry. Right. I feel you. Um, also, um, my favorite Transformers are the ones that are dinosaurs. Fair. Uh, either way, uh, I have a cartoon I'd like to talk about, if I can, yeah, if sure. I can steal the floor for a moment. Actually... And before we still you still the far for a moment, let's put a put an ad segment let's here. Do you know, ad break. yes, I'd sing a jingle if we had one. Okay, so here we go. Umar, are you familiar with Yu-Gi-Oh? Yes, of course. You talked about it many times. Yes. Have you seen which? So there are there are many Yu-Gi-Ohs. What yes. Yu-Gi-Ohs have you seen? The OG Yu-Gi-Oh, the one, the O E, the oh, it's like was it the OVA one, like the one that was really fucking dark. The uh, TV oh, show, yeah. like the four kids version, you get that one on the island, the four kids one, and the one GX. like the really edgy one, you know, with the motorcycles and stuff. That I thought was the best 
so the second best Yu-Gi-Oh known to man. Yep. Uh, it was like it was Yu DX or something. It was like the ones with the bicycles and such. Oh, no, so bear with me. The first, so okay, going in order, the the edgy dark one is Yu Gi Oh Season Zero. The regular one, like the the one that everyone knows, is Yu Gi Oh. The yeah. one on the island is Yu Gi Oh GX. The yeah. the edgy one with the more uh, Randy there with the motorcycles is Yu Gi Oh. Yeah, no, you meant Enter the many, Void. At- yes, uh, can you not hear me? Sorry about that. I do that sometimes. Did no, you catch my full not. Yu-Gi-Oh Can't explanation? Okay. One more time, just in case the recording picked it up, and I don't want to repeat myself too many times on the podcast. The edgy dark one is Yu-Gi-Oh Zero. The regular one is Yu-Gi-Oh. The one on the island is Yu-Gi-Oh GX. And the edgy motorcycle one is Yu-Gi-Oh 5Ds. Yeah. Okay, so that's what I was thinking of, yeah. A lot of people consider 5Ds to be the best one because it's the one with the most, like, actual plot and the yeah. one that, like, does the game the best. Yeah. My favorite is Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, which is widely considered to be one of the worst ones. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I would consider it the worst of the, the initial trilogy of the three shows, you know what I mean? Fair. Regardless like, of not- how you feel about Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, I need to get... I learned recently... I learned a lot of stuff because here's mm-hmm. the deal. When I watched Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, I'd only ever really seen the first like season and a half, two seasons. Mm-hmm. And I recently learned what the third and fourth season are about. And oh my God, <laughs> it's insanity. So what's uh, happening? Because I don't remember the Islander one that much. I remember. Yeah, no, no one does. So we're just going to, if you, so okay, let's. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go off on this. I'm gonna give a plot summary of Yu Gi Oh GX mm. up to the, up to the four and five season four and five. Assuming that's where we're gonna go with, to the yeah, meat and bones. Gonna, like, I'm just gonna run through the show. Mm. If you want, if you want to take my word for it that this shit gets whack, leave, go watch it, and then come back in like a year when you watched all of Yu Gi Oh GX. Buckle up for this shit. Are you ready? Yes. Season one, main character. I'm going to use the English names. Fucking fight me. Uh, Jaden. Mm-hmm. Jaden is like this happy-go-lucky dude, and he just likes dueling, and he, his favorite phrase is, get your game on, and he's a big slacker, and he's just like, yeah, what a cool dude. Um, and the whole first season is just him vibing, um, and then eventually they fight some guys. So first sacred beast cards or whatever, they fight some scary bad guy. And then the season, yeah. two. season two, a lot of the same stuff. Um, there's a cult now there's like a spooky cult and Jaden goes, yeah, to I remember space. that Yeah, Jaden goes to space to meet magic space dolphin people guys for his new deck. Uh, and then he fights the evil cult of light people and whatever that happens to seasons three and four. These ones are the kicker. Season three introduces um, Jesse, as he's called in the English. Uh, Johan, as the the weebs will call him. Um, mm-hmm. And Jesse is Jaden's, like, gay love interest. <laughs> they never explicitly, like, call it out, but it's so, like, heavily hint. Like, it just yeah. feels like they're gay. I don't know. I kind of find it ironic that um, the show was kind of supposed to be like kind of be hip, but also saying was once the boomer saying like "fuck you" to like the younger kids as well. That's how. That's the vibe I got from it, you know. Fair. Either way, but yeah. So that that was like, oh, that's interesting. I didn't. I learned that. I'm like, oh, that's weird. Didn't expect that. Um, yeah. but, it was, but here's where it gets crazy. I don't know the exact timing of this, but essentially, when Jaden was like a kid, he had a Yu-Gi-Oh card that was possessed by a weird demon monster. So yeah. um, a- anyone that got near Jaden or was mean to him, that m- thing put in a permanent coma. So they did the only logical thing, which is they put that card in a rocket and shot it off into space. Mm-hmm. And then they gave Jaden, as a young child, shock therapy to induce amnesia so he'd forget what it ever happened. Fuck? You know, this is in the show. This is explicitly mm-hmm. stated. Okay. Um, so either way, so his weird demon becomes like obsessed with him. So it comes back from space and has this weird thing where it now believes that the only way to show how much it loves Jaden is to physically harm him. So it like possesses people okay. and tries to kill him a little bit. Okay, let me okay, let me just stop you there for a moment. Are you sure this is not literally uh maybe a the creator's case of literally like 
child abuse when they're like a children or some shit. This is the this lightest was a fucking child abuse actually. Like how the demons acting. This is the lightest part of this story. This is the calm. Gonna Wait, get. what now? It only gets worse. Season one, happy, upbeat. Season four, horrible depression and PTSD. Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, continue. If that's like really no, the tip of the iceberg. Okay, so that happens, right? Um, so again, I haven't actually seen it. This was explained to me. So consider this the telephone explanation of the plot. Okay. But either way, so one thing leads to another and Jaden and all of his friends get sent to hell. What? Um, yeah, that demon girl brings him to hell. Um, and like, like, like legit, like there are dual monster spirits that try to kill you. This is where you go when you die. Hell. We just a real bad time. Um, Jaden's gay love interest, Jesse gets kidnapped. And so now Jaden's like obsessed with bringing him back. Um, so he, they, he goes around and at one point he finds himself in like a Coliseum. Um, and in the Coliseum, he duels a guy and essentially the plot is like, here's the deal. Uh, if you lose the duel, you die. But if you beat me in this duel, I'll kill all of your friends. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. And sounds like some, well, okay. Now explains uh, 5d a lot more better now. He was like, well, I'm trying to find Judah or not Judah. He's Judah. I'm trying to find Jesse or whatever. So cool. So he murders him. Jesus Christ. He beats him in the duel and all his friends die. Um, later on, at some point as well, they, they do this thing where they foreshadow some guy called like the Supreme Master. And the Supreme yeah. Master has been going around massacring people and killing children. Like explicitly killing children. Like it's like. They show children on screen and then they show their corpses. Like, not their corpses, but like their remains. Is this like, uh, is this an American dub or like a Japanese this one? Is the show. This is in the actual show. Um, but I, yeah, so kill it, just offing, murdering people, children, everyone. Um, okay, and, that's and my fetish. Then is revealed, it's revealed later on that in fact, Jaden is the supreme master. <laughs> So you're telling me Jaden's one who's the killing the goddamn children? Yeah, like uh, the Supreme Master is Jaden's like dark suppressed psyche. Jesus fucking Christ! Which then you kind of take so and you realize, oh, so they kind of just implied that Jaden has committed mass genocide. I mean, I'm not surprised. He seemed like a guy who would have done it. Yeah, just like if you get a moment, just go watch the first season of Yu Gi Oh GX and just remember this explanation. Um, moving, moving. We're not quite done yet. Oh god. Um, so I, I'm trying to remember what was. I think there's some important detail I'm leaving out. It, it. Wait, what, Randy? I can't hear you. Randy, you've entered the war. Uh, there's a lot to be developed. There's a lot. Uh, sorry, don't worry. I didn't say anything of important. I'm taking a moment to be flabbergasted. Um. Yeah, a lot goes on. Uh, essentially, like, there's a duel where, like, this crocodile man is like, I, I know you're mm. still in there, Jaden, so I'm going to have a duel with you, and using my magic powers, I'm going to pull your soul free from the Supreme Master. And it's like, oh, okay, so this is Jaden's, like, Jesus. redemption. No, they oh, Jaden kills the crocodile guy as well. It's so fucking insane. <laughs> I wish, like, I I can't do it justice. It's... This is just me doing my best to explain it. There's one character who's like in the yeah. first seasons, he's like this cool epic dueler. Uh, but then he loses in like season two or three. So from then on, he gets these shock collars that whenever you lose points in the yeah. game, you, they uh, shock you. Uh, and then at some point, if he dies of a heart attack because he gets fuck? shocked too much, like a lot happens like, in this show. Is this the guy who went to like Antarctica to fight with penguins or something and then came oh. back? Oh my god, Chaz. Yeah, that's not that you were talking about like Chaz, yeah. I'm talking about Zane. Okay, well, well his record, what the fuck happened to Chaz? Chaz, I don't he dies. He's one of the friends that gets killed. They I think they bring him back at some point, but he does get killed when Jaden wins that duel. The Chaz Jeez. is the best. Chaz is a gamer. Yeah, damn. That sucks for Chaz. Because I yeah. never really got into it. It's like, okay, I assume it's like none of those go happy go lucky kind of you know shows. Jesus Christ. No, no, no. First season of GX is so because like I said, I've only really seen the first two seasons. So I was like, so this is like the upbeat happy mm. Yu-Gi-Oh. No, <laughs> no, this is the like one of the most fucked up. 
Yu-Gi-Oh GX. Mm-hmm. I didn't know. I I need to get around to watching seasons three and four because oh my god, the turn they take. Because it makes like it sounds like it made five D more lighthearted. Damn, what the fuck? No, it's insanity. <laughs> okay, because. No, I wonder, wonder if they actually took 5D to like the full on edge, you know, what they did with GX. I wouldn't be surprised if 5Ds was hiding more edge. I've only seen like the first season of 5Ds. Dude, it gets really fucking weird at the end of the show. Oh my god. So, Morris, what happened was the main character causes the apocalypse. <laughs> and he has to fight some guy from the future who became right. a god, more or less, and trying to stop him. People need to watch Yu-Gi-Oh. Everyone's like, oh, Yu-Gi-Oh. That's one of those card game animes. Oh, that's stupid. The fir- Yu-Gi-Oh is legitimately wild. Yeah, no, it was really fucking... So more, there's like this time-traveling plot, more or less, where there's this like god from the future, and he saw more or less the death and destruction of the, po- of the world with the apocalypse, more or less. And he's trying to prevent it, you know, by winning the, a duel uh, game against the main character. You know, because you see what happened to the guy more. I was like, he went to war. He came back to his wife after war. And his wife fucking died in another war. You know, mm-hmm. then his kid died. And then he was just like last person alive on the world, you know, Same. becoming an old crippled man. Morris. And then like God said, OK, yeah, you're a God now, motherfucker. And pushed him and made him go back into time to fight this one duel, what you know, on a fucking motorcycle. I love this show so much. And then, you know, you know what the fucking happens to that guy? What happens? He <laughs> fucking gets killed. <laughs> so that shit happens again. People need to watch you. Yu-Gi- more people need to watch you. <laughs> if this podcast makes one more person watch you, yeah, I'll be happy. Like, dude, this is like five seasons. <laughs> It's insanity. I, I've heard there's one season of Yu-Gi-Oh, which is Arc 5, which a lot of people consider to be the actual worst Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, but the plot has been described to me as all of the Yu-Gi-Oh's got together and fought behind a Denny's. <laughs> and I want to watch that so bad. Everyone's like, this is the worst season. And I'm like, I don't care. That premise sounds interesting. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Like, what was, what was it? Have you watched the movie Anchorman? Yes, I've seen Anchorman. Like, you know that remember that like all of these like local Anchorman two shows are fighting each other in like yeah. a backyard because that's like, it sounds like you're describing right here. That's that's basically that fight is how all of Arc Five was described to me, and I'm like, I have to watch that. Like, I have to know. Yu Gi Oh is so wild. Okay, okay, actually, so let me rephrase it. So more or less. What happens is that there, even after the fight, the guy was main character is trying to make sure that he doesn't fucking do that, more or less. And apparently, he somehow did it with the removal of his like cursed tattoo or something, you know, like disappearing oh, one day or some shit. Yeah. Even the oh god, the original Yu Gi Oh is fucked up. Yu Gi Oh GX is more fucked up. Yu Gi Oh Five Ds is pretty fucked up. I mean, it's just depressing more and fucked up. I, you know what I mean. Exactly. Because to be frank, if if like, you describe the Yu Gi Oh TV show as a generation, you describe it as the millennial and Gen Z generation. Oh, yeah, we're fucked. Well, actually, to be frank, GX is probably the uh, the one after that. Probably can describe more of the millennials. Like, fuck it, we're fucked, and we don't care at this point. At the, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have our God. virtual waifus. We can fuck. You know, like why the fuck does it matter? <laughs> more or less matter. There's a whole ass episode of Yu Gi Oh GX where they talk about their card waifus. That's a real episode. Happened. Wait, so what was the show that you were comparing to Like that was actually worse than GX then? Was it Zexel or... So, it's not Zexel. Arc 5 is considered to be the worst one. Arc 5, okay. GX is considered to be slightly better than Arc 5. Zexel was pretty bad, mind you, so... Zexel wasn't... <sighs> It was just bad, like Yu Gi Oh standards. What I mean, it was terrible. I watched two seasons of it. It just felt I, boring. I almost finished it. I need to get around. I I need to get around to watching all of Yu Gi Oh. Actually, let's look up this. I'm just kind of curious, you know, like what's the what's the plot of this? Hi everyone, and welcome to the Yu Gi Oh podcast, where we talk <laughs> about Yu-Gi-Oh! thirty minutes at a time. Look. Oh, if- you should have known the moment I was invited on this show. You had to realize, okay, it's gonna be <laughs> where Randy just goes off about Yu Gi Oh. 
Oh my god, you know what I just remembered? Oh my god, there's a character in Yu-Gi-Oh! I think it was Zexel, who's a straight-up cat girl. I'm not a I, I know that you're right, but I'm concerned now. Yu-Gi-Oh! can throw anything at you. You can think know. you're ready for Yu-Gi-Oh! and you never will be. Yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel is like the one with the aliens and like the Greek mythology one, right? Uh, it's the one with all the numbers, and he's like he's got like a ghost friend who lives in a key. He's the one that wants to high five the sky. Okay, because I don't know why. Because I remember there was something about like traveling worlds or some shit, you know, like alien life or something like that. That's that's kind of GX and Arc or Zexel. They kind of both touch on that whole alien jazz. Okay. There was also what was the most Yu-Gi-Oh Vrains? That was the other one. That was the most the second most recent one. There's mm-hmm. a more recent one now. Yu-Gi-Oh Vrains is phenomenal. Yu-Gi-Oh Vrains is a masterpiece. Not because it's good, but because I Yu-Gi-Oh Vrains was the first Yu-Gi-Oh where I sat down and just kind of accepted it as a comedy. <laughs> and it's so good. There's a whole like what you can look it up, a whole minute long bit where they go, you can't judge a duelist until you've held his deck. You right. know, because that's like a because that's like a D joke. You get it, mm-hmm. and they run with that bit for like a whole segment in a children's cartoon. <laughs> okay, so I'm looking at uh, Arc Five, and apparently it aired. You know, what do you mean? It, of course, it aired. I'm aware that it aired. I'm shocked that like it only lasted like what three years or something, and that's kind of shocking. Yeah, Zexel was like three seasons. Arc five. How many seasons did Arc five have? Not a lot, Zexel had nine season. Nine seasons. Oh, while Zexel, uh, well, no, Arc, no, Arc five had three. While Zexel had nine or something like that. Oh, it didn't. Zexel has like three seasons. Yeah, I'm saying Zex. Uh, no, but it says, uh, but they're really short seasons. If that makes sense, like the same amount of episodes, but like. Oh, short- okay. Well, that's that's cheater. It has even less. It's like half the episodes, like seventy three episodes or something like that. Is Yugi still alive in Zexel? Oh, but, but I assume these are all in like different universes or some shit. Are they no, all in the Yugi same universe? Connected. No, Yugi shows up in 5D or in GX. I because I was looking up Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel and I'm like, oh, okay, this is interesting. And as I was reading, uh, I saw a thing, uh, which is is Yugi still alive in Zexel? And the answer to that is yes, he is. <laughs> So you're telling me they're all ca- all these uh, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh, wait, like, no, 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 no. That he's still alive in five Ds. This, this, this answer is because it was. It's one of those like people also ask Google results. I think he's also still alive in five Ds, which is still wild to imagine. I mean, here's the true question. You're telling me all of this is all like one universe, like one planet. Yes. This is all. Con- this is one consistent timeline. Jesus fucking Christ! You can tell because there's that there's that movie, uh, like yeah, I know the movie, but that was just kind of like a spinoff thing that no one really talked about. Oh no, no, the one with paradox is like time travel nonsense, and they bring all the they bring three Yugi, three Yugi. Yeah, I know. Jesus Christ! I'm looking. I'm trying to find out if Yugi is if Yugi. Randy, he's for like the five out of like the six minutes in, of those podcasts, because he's in the first episode, would, like fifty or forty minutes has just been dedicated to just talking about Yu Gi Oh. Jesus Christ! Oh, uh, look, I warned you, dude. Dude, we haven't even got to my week yet, Randy. <laughs> I, look, I'm sorry. You're just there's a fan theory that Roku is Yu Gi Moto from Zexel. I don't even know. Whatever. Fuck. I don't even know what half the shit's happening anymore now. Okay, but it, hold on. But okay, so okay, you know, like the world of five Ds, right? Like, like you've seen that setting. Yeah, before. No, I've seen. I remember. It's really fucked Imagine up. It's kind of like being alive in the original Yu Gi Oh, mm-hmm. and s- continuing to be alive in five Ds. Like those are two wildly different settings. Yeah, I'm like, isn't 5D supposed to be more of the definition of late stage capitalism? Uh, late like, stage well, capitalism. Two islands, like an explosion happened and knocked off a chunk of a continent, uh, and now there's two islands, and one of them's Domino City, where it's all like high tech and futuristic and shit. Yeah. And the other one's the satellite, which is where all the poor people live. In other words, welcome to modern America and literally the yeah, world. Welcome, then? Well, we live in a society. Yes. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, no, I remember that. I think Yugi might also die. Does he die on the show? Yugi might be dead. 
Yeah, Yugi technically dies in the show. Does he? Yeah. When? Like not like a not not the like uh, the kid, but like the Egyptian god. Yeah, he died well, at one he point. He doesn't die. He gets like sent. His like souls released, and he goes back to. The okay, ancient... that, I guess that's what I'm thinking of then. No, that's Yami Yugi. I'm talking about the kid. I'm talking. Does Yugi die? Let me check. I think he's dead. Yugi. I because it says on the Yu-Gi-Oh fandom something about him dying. I don't know. We we need to get off okay, this. Listen, topic. we gotta check this real quick, okay? We have ten minutes left in the podcast. <laughs> I mean, if you're willing to go further, I'm willing to go you know further. What? Let's double okay. down on Yu-Gi-Oh. This podcast is twenty minutes anime and forty minutes Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> oh hell yeah! No, oh my god! You know who I want to talk about? Who? In Yu-Gi-Oh five Ds. Dude, okay, hold on. Hit me. Oh, will you f- you try to figure out if Yugi's dead? I'm gonna fill the space okay. on Yu-Gi-Oh characters. Yeah. Okay. There's this. Okay. There's two characters. I love the Yu-Gi-Oh Five Ds cast. They're phenomenal. There's this dude. That he's a cop. His name is Booker or whatever. No, his name isn't Booker. What's his name? He's a cop. He's the cop from Five Ds. What is your? Why? When I look up, is Yugi Moto alive? It's it's Trudge. That's his name, Officer Trudge. Yeah, um, like, yeah, I remember. I think I, I know it's gonna be like that episode where they're like are fighting in like a prison yard. They no, they fight all the time. Trudge appears multiple times, and I love him. Okay, he's Trudge, the black one, right? Uh no, that's like the police warden, the the warden. Okay, that's that's who I'm thinking of, not then the one you're talking about. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with uh, with Trudge. Like I, I, because like I said, I never finished it. All I know about Trudge is that his main dragon, he has like a dragon. And it's like a giant handcuff dragon. And I want like I want him to have like a whole police themed deck with like because he has like a he has one card that's like a police dog and he has the handcuff dragon, but then also he just has like big stone wall and weird samurai man. Like I mean, to be frank, if it was all police uh, deck, it just must be a policeman just shooting a black person in every card then, but you know. Nice. Yeah, no, they they didn't double down on Officer Trudge's gimmick, and that makes me sad. Okay, so I'm looking this up, and he appears in GX, and he looks so yeah. fucking weird. Like, let me send you this picture. He's, yeah, he's in the very first episode. Like, you see how muscle he is. Let me say, let me. Where did you send me this picture? I'm trying to send it to you right now. It's impossible. I don't remember. I feel like I remember him just looking like Yami, yelling like Mr. Yami. Like he's like kind of tall and black and lithe, and he gives him Wing Karibo. No, 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 no. He looks. Uh, Hold on, I have to see this. I'm, I'm showing this to you right now as you speak. Look how muscular he is. Buff. Yes. Why is he buff? What is? I don't know. I'm from? looking at this as we speak. I don't remember this. I for anyone watching, we have to stop doing visual bits on the podcast. <laughs> then we already started recording this, damn it. <laughs> how do we how do we hold on? Where did you find this image? On the wiki. <laughs> okay. If you're watching this, go to the go to the wiki and just look at Yugi Moto's wiki. No, okay. Just look up if you're okay. Here's your homework. If you're at home right now, as you listen to this podcast, whatever you're doing, stop what you're doing, look this up. Go open Google. Open it right now. Go to go to Google. Look up Yugi Moto GX image. Search it. It's the third image. You'll see Buff Shadow Yugi. What the fuck? <laughs> Why is there Buff Please, Shadow in, Yugi? In 5D, it mentions him. He technically exists in the five D universe. And then Why? it ends there. It ends there. And then the movie. That's it. I'm so confused. <laughs> Is happening. I'm learning so <laughs> exactly much about the Yu-Gi-Oh fuck is... today. Search of Yu Yu Musly Man or something that doesn't hope that let's hope it doesn't actually bring up porn, you know. But can I share with you a real ass quote from Yu Gi Oh? <laughs> sure. You know what they say, Mokuma. If at first you don't succeed, blast it with your blue eyes again. Are you sure that's not from the bridge? No, that's no, no, I know it's not because I know the actual quote from the abridged as well. Which is, uh, remember, Mokuma, if at first you don't succeed, you're not Seto goddamn Kaiba. Jesus Christ. 
so blast it with your blue eyes again is a real scene from the actual show. Oh my god. It's so good. Another wait, and there's another one. Someone's dueling Chaz, and he goes, I'm gonna Chaz you up. And he goes, Before you Chaz me up, I activate my face down card. And he goes, What? How? And he goes, Well, I'm just call out its name dramatically, and it flips face up. It's very simple. We've been playing this game for a while. <laughs> that is from the actual show. Look that up. It's insanity. <laughs> I want to give a big fucking hug to whoever dubs Yu-Gi-Oh! Because they are insane! Isn't it being dubbed by, but it's like, Konami? I don't, maybe, I don't even know. In, in the first season of Yu-Gi-Oh!, Seto threatens to throw himself off a building if he does not win a children's card game. And it <laughs> works! <laughs> like, legitimately... Who writes this? It's insanity. <laughs> boomers, of course. Japanese boomers, to be I more specific. I love Yu-Gi-Oh so much. Okay, I have to assume that um, what's probably happening is like originally was what the first three seasons are dubbed by what four kids, and then four yeah, kids no, dubbed no, somewhat of like half of Zexal, and then it just like okay, Konami no, took well, over. No, just, I don't think four kids didn't do five Ds. They only, I think they only did Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu-Gi and GX. They did apparently have Zex. I'm pretty sure they did 5D. Then who did? I don't think so. Well, because Yu Gi Oh! and GX were the only ones where they changed the names. No, it, it was done by uh, Four Kids. Was it? Yeah. Why is it good? <sighs> Fuck what I know. Because what more or less happened, it looks like, is like four, five. I don't know. It's like more or less, they just stopped getting, kind of giving a shit because they lost Pokemon, I think. I guess. You saw that abridged episode, like not abridged, but like one shot. Like it's the same person who made um, what the Yu Gi Oh bridge. Morris so was like um, you know that whole joke, like uh, uh two dudes in a hot tub. But Morris so yeah. make that into a, a bridge episode, and that's what you get you Q five D episode. <laughs> Fair. You know what was it like? The main guy versus that like what the blonde haired guy, like friend or whatever. I don't remember. I just don't remember being this fucked up. Okay. <laughs> It, it no one everyone when they think back on Yu-Gi-Oh is like oh Yu-Gi-Oh that's like the children's card game anime god what a silly fun anime watch watch that show it's insanity like right I'm just gonna be honest I don't know how the hell you expect me to cut this up <laughs> I like the first half it, Ruby and shit and then this like second half is just like that's it that's what you had that's how you have to cut up 20 minutes of Ruby 40 minutes oh my god wait no you know what I just remembered what the plot of like i think it's the dark side of dimensions movie some plot uh, of some like really recent Yu-Gi-Oh movie i think it was the dark side of dimensions is seto okay. kaiba is like still super pissed that he never got his final rematch with yugi so he finds the millennium puzzle and creates a way to like recreate or resummon the pharaoh so that he can duel him in like virtual reality and then also some other dude with weird dimension magic tries to kill them both or something. Who cares? What the fuck? Is Seto Kaiba still alive? I think he might be. Okay, let's search this up then. Seto Kaiba. <laughs> I was looking this up. It's Seto Kaiba Scaly. Probably. I assume he has to be dead by now. Like, I mean, you, you... okay, let's check. Let's go all the way to the bottom, more or less. I think he's spoilers spoilers anyone who wants to know i think he's dead i think he dies in that dark side of dimensions movie damn okay That's but hold on okay so hold on wait so when does that movie take place i don't know it's search okay so you said it's dark... hold on okay, sorry for the said... silence everyone we we are enraptured by Yu-Gi-Oh. we're just taking a moment <laughs> Okay. Right now, I'm, just, I'm just looking at this here. Uh, 5D, he's also mentioned in there as like the guy who kind of caused Domino City to exist. Fair. It's sent six months after the original Yu-Gi-Oh! story. And it that means that six months after they release Kai or the Atems or whatever is soul, Kaiba creates get, gets the disassembled Millennium Puzzle. 
Mm -hmm. returns the the pharaoh's spirit or whatever and then they duel in augmented reality what the what is Yu-Gi-Oh? who i'm so happy i can live in the timeline that Yu-Gi-Oh exists in because it's you know. legitimately wild i think that's a good note to end the podcast on do you, do you have anything you want to share umar jesus fucking christ what is this season like what Go is this episode Anyone, anyone who's here, anyone who's listening, go watch you. Yeah, just, just do it. Well, anyway, thank you for listening to the Oh God Why podcast, episode seventeen. Twenty minutes review, literally the rest. Uh, Forty minutes Yu Gi Oh. Welcome anyway, to the Yu-Gi-Oh. Thank you for listening to the podcast, and hope you guys enjoy your weekend. Anything you have to say, Randy, before we leave? Let's go watch Yu Gi Oh. <laughs> go watch Yu Gi Oh. Okay. As for me, I'm just gonna watch a new Transformers TV show on Netflix tomorrow. Okay, anyway, guys, bye. I hope to see you guys next week with me, Randy, and Peter. Bye. See you later.